Hi everyone, welcome to the lab. This time I have Fluke clamp meter for repair, model 374. I wanted to get myself something like this for a while. I wanted a model which can do DC amps. This thing was sold for parts or repair and it was described as not powering up. And yes, that's what I see. I put fresh batteries in and nothing happens. So, let's take a look. Just two screws holding this thing together, here and here. And the batteries connect to the board through these two contacts, touching these two pads. Looks quite clean inside. I don't see anything obviously wrong on the first glance. I managed to take the board out. And first, this selector switch needs to be pulled off. But it can be a bit stubborn, so I used this plastic tool to pry it off. And I see that someone has done it with a screwdriver. I see some marks on the board. So apparently someone has been inside and not very careful in the process. And I'm not sure I needed to detach the clamp from the case, but I wanted to carefully disconnect uh, this flat flex from the board first. Now we can take a closer look at the board. There is some adjustment here, accessible through this slot in the battery compartment, under this calibration seal. This is a hold button, and a buzzer, and clamp connector. So this part must have to do with the amp sensors in the clamp main section here. I guess there must be a big chip controlling all this under this LCD. Some input protection here. Look at this precision high voltage resistor on ceramic substrate. Polyfuse here. Everything looks great. I don't see anything obviously wrong so far. I started checking around here, and I think I know what the problem is, or was, let me explain. I started looking from the battery input, here it is, uh, positive and negative, and there is a tantalum cap across uh, this uh, input, uh, negative and positive. And uh, there is a low dropout uh, linear regulator, 1.8 volts. And there is one more here, identical one. And uh, the voltage in is pin 1, and it is connected to the battery input, uh, I mean to this positive side. And the uh, next uh, pin 2 is the ground, and the next pin is shutdown. And this chip is enabled when shutdown is high. They recommend in the datasheet to tie this shutdown pin to the voltage in, if not used. But it is used here, and the shutdown pin is connected to this capacitor. So this capacitor is between the ground and shutdown. And uh, this voltage in also goes to that regulator, and uh, shutdown as well. I can uh, see that uh, from this via, there is internal trace to this via and to this shutdown pin. I can see it, I think, by shining light from the back. So, these devices share voltage in and shutdown. And uh, the shutdown also goes to this switch, to this pad. And this pad is the ground, and uh, this is what is shorted when uh, the meter is off. Uh, so the shutdown is pulled to the ground, but when we turn the meter on, the shutdown should go high, and uh, the meter should uh, power up. But I measured a short across this capacitor, or between the ground and shutdown, and when I probed around for a while, I think I removed something here between the ground pin and shutdown pin. I'm not entirely sure now, 
but uh, now there is no short anymore and I wonder if uh, that was the whole problem so maybe it should work now, let's try here is a close-up of these regulators they are marked LPTG and they are LP2985 and I was just about to start recording my explanation that I found a short and uh, about possible steps let's say desolder this cap and if uh, the short is still there then desolder one regulator and then another one until the short disappears and the next moment the short was gone and I'm not even sure where it was exactly a bit disappointing but nothing is perfect I put just the board and the selector switch into the case for now and uh, look at this it powers up how cool is that it's back together it powers up the backlight is working the window is a bit scratched perhaps I can polish it later let's do some basic checking the most basic thing is DC voltage everything starts from some voltage reference and analog to digital converter using that voltage reference so here I have this good old Fluke 341A DC voltage calibrator more than adequate for this job almost an overkill because it is supposed to be within 50 ppm or so and this is just a clump meter with one voltage range of 600 volts resolution of 0.1 volt and accuracy of 1% nothing outstanding but still to rely on measurements we need to check that it is within spec so let's check it out I set 100 volt range here so 10 volts 20 30 40 50 60 70 80 90 and 100 perfect go back to zero switch to 1000 volt range 100 200 300 400 500 and 600 perfect I don't have an AC calibrator and we are doing just basic checking anyway so let's just use mains and uh, compare with Fluke 87 which is way more accurate than this clamp meter and as we can see they agree almost perfectly now let's check resistance really quick this is 10 ohm resistor no problem this is 100 ohm resistor no problem this is 1k resistor no problem and uh, the limit of this thing is 6k so here is 10k resistor and it cannot do that so not the main function here quite limited but anyway works fine and now to the main function of this clamp meter which is to state the obvious current measurement using the clamp and again I don't have an AC calibrator so let's limit ourselves to DC amps and not all clamp meters can measure that and I wanted to have a clamp meter with DC amps this model can measure up to 600 amps with a resolution of 0.1 amp and accuracy of 2% so here we are reading about 1 amp which is an offset and we need to zero it out it's okay for DC and uh, here we have this Agilent lab supply which can go up to 5 amps so I set the output to 1 volt 5 amps 
it will dump about 5 watts into this poor cable. So let's turn this on and here we are. About 5 amps. No problem at all. So here we are. Fluke 374 clamp meter repaired and basic calibration done. The repair was not very exciting, but anyway, it is what it is this time. Thanks for watching. Bye.